Three, two, one, go. I literally almost just started with the same intro. Sorry. I was about to say. Hey, everybody. I'm Captain Zeus. I'm the Waji. I'm Relatable Panda. And we are Nerds and Squares. In today's nerdy news, we got ourselves some uh, depth stuff going on here. Johnny Depp is been stepping down from being Grindelwald from what we're hearing. Apparently, Warner Brothers came up to him and was like, yo, we, we want you to bounce. And he's like, I mean, I guess. I guess I'll bounce, you know. Oh, he's been doing this for years trying to get me out, but whatever. And so he has uh, officially stepped down and they are trying to re recast him on that. So it's a sad day for the Wizarding World, to be honest. I personally loved Johnny Depp as Grindelwald. I thought he yeah. played it beautifully. He looked right. Um, it, Johnny Depp's always an amazing actor, whether mm -hmm. he's Jack Sparrow, Edward Scissorhands, whatever you want to go with that. But he's, he's an amazing actor and him leaving this huge role, one, I don't think was a smart move at all for Warner Brothers because now they have to recast it, which you can always mess with it because <clears throat> people can disguise how they look in the wizarding world. So it could be like one of those, that's not what I really look. This is my real face. Um, but it's, I, I don't think it's going to play well because he really did bring in a really good villainous role. And um, I, I was really excited to see what he was going to do next because he's very good at what he does. But I mean, just hashtag F Amber Heard, but you know, we'll get to that later. <laughs> he did, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Several times on occasion. <laughs> he did. Probably. Mm. Hopefully. Hopefully. It was consummated. <laughs> but, uh, oh. yeah, uh, it didn't help that he also lost his legal battle with, what was it? The Sun. The Sun, thank you. Mm. Uh, to the Sun about that kind of stuff, too, which we'll go into, into depth with all this, you know, later on. But, um, uh, well, gee, what, what are our thoughts on this? What, what, how do you feel? So, uh, just to preface, I'm a pretty um, inexperienced fan when it comes to <laughs> the uh, Fantastic Beasts. Uh, just today, I was able to catch up on all the drama, all the episode, uh, episodes. I swear, <laughs> it's Star Wars. That's <laughs> all that runs through Star my brain. Wars. <laughs> I know. And both the movies. I will say... <laughs> I was watching a video and the guy was talking about the idea that it is, um, whoa. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> so we do have the idea that it is pretty early in the franchise. Um, so if Grindelwald, Grindelwald, whatever they say, yeah, um, were to be like a main character that they want to continue for the next, I think there's three that are supposed to happen, three. correct? Yes. So we do only have one iteration of Grindelwald and I mean we have the like little bit that he was in the the first one so I don't think it'll be something to where like it'll absolutely hurt Johnny Depp is an amazing actor so losing that like big pull is mm -hmm. unfortunate but I think in terms of the franchise um they can adapt to it uh <sighs> It's it's gonna be funky, especially with who they were doing the casting and who they've said that they think they might want to cast and all oh. those lines. Even like bringing in one of the characters from the the movie currently and having them be the next Grindelwald. So it's just I think there's a lot of options that they have, but they lost one big one, and the I think that's option. kind of their main problem. Uh, he did portray it very well. I watched quite a few of his scenes that were just him and seeing the dynamics that he had and that he could bring to the table was pretty good. Pretty fantastic. <laughs> um, and that's the end of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Roll credits. Roll credits. Um, but yeah, I, I, um, I think they can bounce back if they do it properly. Uh, they definitely did screw up, but I think they have the chance to... Uh, what's the word? Um, fix redeem themselves. Them oh, yeah, redeem themselves. Not, not there you go. Mistakes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, P Panda, what, is, what are your thoughts on this? It's watching both of the movies currently, um, just today <laughs> recently. I'm not a huge 
fan of the show or movie uh, or the series for that matter. Um, I never really watched it when it first came out. Like I said, today's the first time that I've seen both of the movies. Um, seeing his portrayal though as Grindelwald, it was something spectacular to witness. Um, Wasn't he's always been a very diverse actor in the sense of the roles that he's been able to play. We've seen him go from Edward Scissorhands to Jack Sparrow. And that itself And Charlie is... and the Chocolate Factory. We can't we can't remember. And Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, dear yes. God. That was a beautiful. But we've seen him jump from Freaking various out. different roles and very different character arcs. And then to see him play Grindelwald was just again amazing to witness. Just because it showed his depth as an actor to be able to play somebody like that. Um his depth. And yeah, his death um, <laughs> and have a big impact on it. Do I think Warner Brothers messed that up by forcing him to resign? <clears throat> yes, I do think that they did screw themselves over there. Is it going to be hard to find a replacement for him? Yes. At that point, I'll get into it a little bit later when we talk about it more in depth. But it's just, it's going to be very hard to watch the next couple of movies um, that do come out without him as Grindelwald. Only because of the fact that I'm used to seeing him as it now, and it's going to be very hard to adjust. No, yeah, I completely agree. And I, I've, I'm always a huge fan of Harry Potter. You know, I, I read the books when I was in fifth grade. I probably should reread them, but I haven't read them since. Um, <laughs> but I've watched the <laughs> movies like a million times. And... There are only like two other actors that technically portrayed Grindelwald, the young version from you know the original Harry Potter movies, um, and then Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell, yes. Thank you. Um, he also portrayed Grindelwald, but it was really just a disguise. I mean, he really wasn't necessarily Grindelwald. Um, and I think both of those times they were it was good portrayals. I mean, the 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 younger version he didn't say or really do anything. He just kind of just stood there. So, I mean, mm -hmm. there's not much to say on that. But Colin Farrell did a pretty good job, and I think he was, the way his acting was compared to how Grin Johnny Depp portrayed Grindelwald, it, it showed that they were the same person. Um, mm -hmm. And, I mean, a, that's a toast to both of their acting skills. They're both great actors, you know. Exactly. Uh, Johnny Depp is very versatile, and he can play whatever role he, he can put his mind to or whatever is presented to him. I agree. I think this was a huge mistake that, well, I mean, I think it's a huge mistake from Warner Brothers because one, it wasn't really necessary. There was no reason to get rid of him um, other than some outside means. Yeah, controversial outside good. means. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because even though for some reason it didn't do well, Crimes of Grindelwald didn't do well box office wise, it still was, I think, a, a fan favorite. It, it was still mm -hmm. a successful movie otherwise. Yeah. I know I love to rewatch it. My siblings love to rewatch it. It was an amazing movie. And it, it was one of those, yes, we cannot wait for the next one kind of deal. And seeing them have to try to recast or basically get another version of Grindelwald to portray for the next two to three movies is going to be a little difficult. Um, they might even have to go back, like instead of doing like five in total, doing like four or three, uh, just because money wise because it does i mean johnny depp did only see, film one scene uh for this third movie which they supposedly they they paid him for his whole thing like the, the whole mm -hmm. amount of time he was supposed to have played they paid him for that one scene which you know good for him he got paid he he's he's good on that end yeah um but i i'm i'm a i'm a depp fan here and i think that's a that's a pretty big hit there and it, it's sad to see so and, uh oh go for it go for it go for it wait so I was thinking um, something that they could do. Uh, it kind of depends on like the chops that he has, but the actor who portrayed him as a young one, mm -hmm. I mean, the wizarding world, obviously we know that like disguises and there's so much magic that like, we don't even understand, right. especially seeing like some of the things that Grindelwald was even able to do in the escape scene. Like yes. there's, there's obviously a lot of powers that some of these wizards can have without even speaking verbal spells. Now, Harry Potter, we, we saw, and we grew up with this whole idea of like, everything had to be announced, but we're seeing like this mm -hmm. whole, like, the last three. 
Yeah, and the last three was just like mostly because of like tenure almost. But you're starting to see that on a bigger scale because most of the people we're watching have a tenure. They're they've been in this world. I mean, you have um, uh, what's this? Uh, the super super old wizard, like the oldest wizard of all. Um, I can't remember his name. I swear, if you say Dumbledore, I'm not no, it's not Dumbledore. It's the <laughs> um, he was mentioned. Oh, Nick, uh, Nicholas Flamel. N- Nicholas Flamel. Nicholas Flamel. So there you have go. someone that like one. that that has just like this immense amount of power. So what they could do is they could try to pull something where if the young version that literally just was portrayed in that one scene had mm-hmm. enough chops, it was almost like he swapped back to that time. Maybe even tried to push a little bit on the the heartstrings of a certain Dumbledore by portraying himself as that young version Mm -hmm. they could possibly pull from that um that's kind of like the only option for taking someone that's already in the world and just like reusing it also the guy's not a super big name actor so the the budget (laughs) wouldn't be a big problem and it could also like we could see somebody that was kind of like just tucked aside that was potentially a decent actor i mean you Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers. Ooh, <laughs> Warner Brothers doesn't grab bad actors to portray characters, even even smaller characters. Mm-hmm. So we could see a pretty decent portrayal from like the younger version that we saw in the mirror scene. And also, Colin Farrell, he, from what I've heard, he would have been like one of the ideal choices to come back to portray him. Mm-hmm. However, mm-hmm. Um, due to his schedule with the Batman and, and playing as Penguin, it's also being filmed in London. And it's a lot of restrictions, so he's unable to. Yeah, which is a shame. Um, he's a good yeah. actor, and that he, I think he could have also played that well. But I agree, though, him and Colin Farrell would have uh, been the only two other actors in the current Wizarding World universe that we've seen that would have been able to pull it off successfully. Mm-hmm. And uh, Panda, you had to say something earlier. No, I was just going to say there was a poll that was put out uh, in regards to this situation as well. And just getting people's opinions, you know, Mm -hmm. um, who are quote unquote diehard fans of the Harry Potter series and the Fantastic Beasts series. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, the responses were unanimous. Um, You know, on Facebook, we had the poll that did uh, in total 340 votes. Uh, with majority of that saying that no, this wasn't the right move for Warner Brothers, and twelve of those saying yes, it was. Oh, wow. um, unfortunately, uh, we don't have anything from those that said yes. Uh, I think I don't know why. I think they were afraid of uh, getting backlash. Backlash for it, which I mean, kudos to them. You know, we live in a very sensitive time. Mm-hmm. Um, one person, we're going to leave them anonymous for that reason. Um, says that Warner Brothers uh, did not make the right choice because, quotes, uh, who the hell changes one of the main guys on the third installment of the film? It's not like he died, and then the reason they fired him, was, they they the reason they fired him for was not fair. Like you're if you're avoiding bad publicity, let both of them go. Their decision was sus as hell. Okay. Okay. I do. Um, oh. So one thing that I do like with that is the idea that like Warner Brothers also did a little bit of determination with um, Amber Heard, which we're going to talk about later. But Mm -hmm. like that's that is another plus side was like they didn't just pick a side. They addressed the situation mutually, which I did appreciate. To to your point, Wage, um, yes, they did address both sides of it. But for the most part, there has been no rumor speculation or even confirmation of amber heard being released from her roles um for the most part they're kind of keeping that one close to the vest as of right now because of everything it seems like um again we there is a lot of evidence that points towards misinformation from both sides um potentially from both sides mainly from in this case amber's side um, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, Zeus, go ahead. Um, so I did want to say, from what it looks like, uh, from what I've saw, it is confirmed she's going to come back to play Aqua, uh, play in the Aquaman Mira. sequel. Yes, uh, Mira. She's going to. He's going to. She's going to come back to play in the Aquaman sequel, as well as be in the mini series for the uh, Justice okay. League, uh, Zack Snyder cut. Which we we'll, we can always go into that in another podcast so that's DC mm-hmm. related. Uh, but from what it looks like, there's no signs of her actually being terminated. 
Okay. Now there is a petition that is getting a gotcha. lot of traction that yes. is wanting her to get um, terminated, which, if I'm not mistaken, has a million votes or a million. Let me votes? fact check that for you real quick. Uh, it's something along the lines, but it's a lot. They have a lot of votes or <laughs> petitions uh, saying this... for her to leave her role because mm -hmm. of the situation. Yeah, and they wanted Amelia Clark was something yes. that they were mentioning for it. They, yeah. oh, there's a recast where they're like, they'll swap out Amber Heard for Amelia Clark to play mm -hmm. um, Mira, which, like I said, yeah. we can go, we'll go into that into another Yeah, we podcast. will a little bit later. Yeah. But yeah, continue um, on, Panda, with the pollings. Good. Yeah. Uh, Drippers. Zeus, just for confirmation on that, the petition is set for 1.5 million there we go. on uh, change.org. But they currently have 1.4 million, and uh, they're looking very close to hitting that goal uh, pretty soon. Looks like they're probably um, gonna hit it. They will definitely hit it. Another one that's kind of interesting that uh, we can kind of use as a little bit of a segue here, as far as casting goes, if y'all want to go into that right now. Yeah, sure. Is um, let me see if I can't do it here. Is <clears throat> Uh, it says, I don't know if I would call it smart, given the fact that we already have one controversial figure attached to the series. Maybe it was for the best that they didn't have an actor with so much baggage attached to him, but I don't know. Um, they do state that they do think Johnny is innocent, that's for sure, and they should definitely fire Amber. But even with all that said, uh, I'm definitely excited to see Mads McKilson take on the role as he'll be scary and threatening. He says that's his personal take on it, but uh, definitely we'll see the next movie because they do think Mads is just perfect for that role. Okay. So I like him as an actor. I think he's a really good actor. He does play villains very well. Um, now, him as a Grindelwald position, I, I'm a little iffy on. Um, I think he can pull it off, but the only thing is I don't think he's he has that like soothing but yet manipulative vibe. He's a very just from like looking and hearing him an intense or um what's the word I'm looking for? Intimidating? Intimidating? Yes, thank you. I don't know why I went you know blank on that. Intimidating uh villain. Uh, and and you see that a lot when he's in a lot of villain roles <clears throat> like you know 007, Doctor Strange, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. He's not necessarily the ones to be like a snake, you know? Uh but I I, I think that would be an okay choice. Uh, probably the best choice that they do have, because I don't really think anyone else could pick up the reins that well, but so one thing with that, um so first uh he was also one of the main characters for the show Hannibal. Uh, he portrayed Hannibal Lecter. And um, piggybacking off what you were saying, like the whole idea, like he he's never really played a snake. If you watch, like just look up some clips like later. Mm -hmm. But he he definitely portrays this like, I mean, he was literally a psychologist in Hannibal that like messed with people's minds like talk to them and convince them to do things so he definitely has the ability to mm -hmm. now my my whole thing with it is seeing him as hannibal and then swapping over to see him to possibly play like grindelwald they're they're two very different characters with very different dynamics and that sometimes might be hard to portray now he could kind of give off the same vibe as he did in hannibal to grindelwald but at the same time, it would still, I don't know, it's, it kind of matches the vibe, but he doesn't match the feel for Grindelwald, I feel like. I don't know how to describe it fully. It's because um, Johnny Depp gave such a specific vibe and feel. That is true. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, is true. When you think of someone else taking the reins, that's why I was like, <laughs> Mads is, I don't think, like, he's a good actor, and I think he could play this type of villain in a certain way, but not at this role because the way Johnny Depp gave us, like, he gave us the best villain in this scenario, like, the mm -hmm. ideal grid. Definitely. Role. And for Mads to, I mean, it'll be difficult if he gets casted or anyone that would get casted. I think it'll yeah. be really You gotta fill difficult. some shoes. Yeah. And not only that, oh, but yeah. the third movie, since the, the second one did not do good box office-wise, and the first one did decently, the third one has to hit hard. 
Yeah. Like you need that to launch because if it doesn't, the fourth and maybe even fifth is not even e- either do well or even happen. So mm. whoever fills in the role of Grindelwald and however the movie plays out, there needs it needs to hit. It needs to hit your feels. It needs to hit your pants. It needs to hit every part of your body. So that way everyone's happy. Everyone enjoys it. And that way they can make more money. Yeah. To that point though, and this is just my opinion, I don't think this third movie is going to do very well at box office. It's going to tank, probably be one of the worst tanks mm-hmm. in cinema history oh, because wow. of everything that's going on right now with Johnny Depp. There is a lot of people <laughs> that are very disappointed in everything and they've come out and straight up said that they will be boycotting this movie because Johnny Depp is not Grindelwald. Um, but to that, to that extent, what I get the enjoyment out of is seeing some of these websites and seeing their top nine or top 10 actors to, to play Grindelwald. And, uh, just to list a few is, uh, that I find hilarious in this is, uh, most of the MCU people. Uh, for instance, they're saying one of the website is saying that Benedict Cumberbatch would be a good role, a oh, good God. person to to fill it. Robert Downey Jr. would be a good person to fill the role. Even going a step further as to say that Tilda Swinston, Swinton, Swinton, sorry, mm-hmm. uh, would be a good person to fill the role of Grindelwald in Johnny Depp's place. Anyone so, that, um, that needs to stop watching movies. That one, I feel like. <laughs> so, for that, we definitely need to throw a picture up because, like, people need to understand what we're talking about. <laughs> she yes. did portray a male character in a, I believe it was a show. I believe so. And it, it's so, not dogging on the idea of a female playing Johnny Depp's no. role because that's not what it is. They, She can very well do it. It's just going to be a weird transition to see any three of those going into a big villain role. Mm-hmm. And so, that's just my personal take on that. So just for just quickly, um, my, my thoughts on those MCU roles, which I know this is just one ridiculous, obviously it must be a joking site. Um, to have Benedict Cumberbatch play it, he could barely play Khan that well. Like, come on, guys, let's, let's, let's slow our roles. He's a great actor, but no. Ezra Miller, I've... That doesn't make sense. There's that does not make sense. Him playing two characters right, right there, and he he's not that. It's not that he's not a good actor or anything. He, he's a good actor in certain roles, but I don't think he can play that role well, anyways. And then Tilda Swinton, like they already they already messed up the Ancient One. Can we not mess up Grindelwald as well? Like honestly, that's that's got to be the biggest joke of them all, straight up. So nice. I did see somebody talk about Jude Law. Um, Dumbledore? Jude Law. Oh, yeah, that's who it was. Never mind. I was thinking about something else. I was like... Man. I couldn't remember I couldn't remember <laughs> why I saw Jude Law's name, but that was why yeah. I was talking about like an interaction with that. I was like, man, everybody just yeah. like doesn't know what to do now. All of it. Yeah. All the brains just, are just all over the place on this one. I saw one. Tom Hiddleston sometimes, too. I've seen that as well. <laughs> And I, I'm, I'm iffy on that one because, yeah. as we've seen with Loki, he's he can he can definitely play a, a good snake. But yes, the thing is, it, it's like filling the shoes, you know. Yeah, I know. But it, no matter it, what, yeah. we're gonna be looking at that. We're gonna be looking at oh, them yeah. as filling the shoes. So it's like exactly. It's kind of got to be hard because we have to kind of almost looking at this. We have to look at it in the sense of like we have to accept Johnny Depp is not there. So who would play mm-hmm. a good Grindelwald? That's where it's hard to do. And it's tough because our first instinct is Johnny Depp because he did it so well. It's so like well. yeah. if they tried recasting like Ron Weasley in <laughs> the third movie, it's like, ah, what? Like he can't. That's yeah. basically There's what just, they're trying to do. Types of stuff like that. He's over That's here like, Harry. And then over in the third movie, it's, I don't know, Tilda Swinton like, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're trying I mean, to do. I'm a- on a lesser scale of this, and I know it's uh, it, it's a very very lesser scale, but with the new going back to the Marvel universe for a minute here, and just showing how people can get attached to a specific character, it goes back to the Miles Morales video game that just came out. Mm-hmm. 
they got a ton of backlash over the face of Peter Parker yeah. changing. Yeah, and I've it seen weird. it, and even at that, it's really weird seeing Peter Parker go from how he looked in his game to how he looks in the Spider in the Miles Morales game. It's in the remastered Spider Man. Yeah, in the remastered. That was it was the remastered Spider Man. Yeah, it was very weird because yep. he he just he looks younger, and it was like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. Like it, it didn't Why? make a lot of sense. Nobody really knows. Even at that, no they changed uh, Wilson Fisk too. I don't think people noticed that one either. Yeah, but that one was the fact weird. That they change what they want to change based on whatever reasons and it can be met with very high praise or very big backlash and that's what we're going to see here it going into it whoever fills the shoes of johnny depp is going to be met with a lot of backlash at first Mm -hmm. but i think it could turn out potentially well depending on how they portray the role because it could very well be you know what we still hate you because you replaced Johnny Depp, but you know what? You didn't do that bad, so we'll give you a we'll give you a chance. I think, but only, it's gonna be it's gonna be very very difficult. It's gonna be super difficult, and it, it goes to the sense of studios kind of just do what they want for no reason. Like for the remaster mm-hmm. thing, for example, no one asked for them to do it. There was no issues with yeah. the faces, and they just it was like, very weird. And out of nowhere, too. And everyone had a huge uh, issue with it. Um, and this is just all the way semi-unrelated. But like Sonic, for example. The original, that oh, was good backlash. Gosh. Because they effed up Sonic real bad. But then with all the backlash, they fixed it. And it was the best rendition that they could have done. It was literally how he was supposed to look, straight up. And yeah, it was. I mean, they I never watched the movie. That. I never watched the movie. The movie looked terrible to me. <clears throat> but that's just an example. <laughs> um, I never watched it either. <laughs> But and, and the only goes, one here that's seen that, okay, then probably. Uh, and it goes to this situation where they asked him to, they asked him to step down. Which th- this it only says they asked him to. They it never says how many times they've asked him to. Because I'm sure as soon as the Amber Heard allegations and everything came up, they were like, "We want you out. We want you out. We want you out." Mm. Because they wanted him out now. There's no way that they yeah. didn't want him out to begin with. Now, why he's why he agreed to it. I mean, we we're probably not going to know specifically yet. And the whole reason why they wanted it to happen now, right as they started filming, is also just another thing that doesn't make sense. Like, if you didn't want him there, you shouldn't have put him in in, in the Fantastic Beast and where to find him. You shouldn't have had him have a whole movie, basically, around him where you see him the most. Yeah. Like, it just exactly. didn't make sense. If you didn't want him there, don't cast him. Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. that's that's just my thought on that though yeah it really now, bothers me the from the from the man himself on his instagram he did state and this was posted on november the 6th um he does put a letter out and he was in london at the time and it says in light of recent events i would like to make the following short statement firstly i'd like to thank everyone who has gifted me with their support and loyalty I have been humbled and moved by your many messages of love and concern, particularly over the last few days. Secondly, I wish to let you know that I have been asked to resign by Warner Bros. For, from my role as Grindelwald in Fantastic Beasts, and I have respected, respected and agreed to that request. Finally, I wish to say this. The surreal judgment of the court in the UK will not change my fight to tell the truth, and I confirm, and I confirm that I plan to appeal. My resolve remains strong, and I intend to prove that the allegations against me are false. My life and career will not be defined by this moment in time. Now, it's got a lot going on. Again, they never state, he never does state how many times they did ask him to resign from the right. role. So there is a lot of speculation around that. From yeah. my understanding of A, doing research on this, and B, reading that for myself it seems like the backlash started coming for him from Warner Bros after the appeal that he had with the libel got denied. Hmm. Um, Because, and again, there's a lot of speculation around that too, that the judge knew and knows her Amber Heard's family personally and doing some research on that. Some of these these statements that this judge makes does seem a little bit suspicious to me. Like biased? Biased, yes. Because, okay. um, 
for instance, the judge in the case um, stated uh, that he has found that the great majority of alleged assaults of Ms. Heard by Mr. Depp have been proved to the civil standard. Um, hmm. Essentially, there was enough evidence to state Amber's uh, accusations were uh, correct and factual. Another one states that Depp, uh, he also accepted Heard's uh, evidence that the allegations she made against Depp have had a negative effect on her career as an actor and activist, which is also kind of suspicious because of the fact that there was really no backlash when she, she first made those accusations. No backlash, none. And then um, reading a different article, she states that there was talks of her being recasted in the Justice League movie and in Aquaman. But as we saw, A, Justice League didn't really have any secondary mm-hmm. She wasn't even in it, to be honest. Exactly. I mean, it was only she was never a, a thought of it. She never lost her role in Aquaman. Nope. So there was really no, and there was no speculation about it. So that was kind of suspicious too. The only time Johnny was De- recently with the petition. Exactly. Yeah. Johnny Depp did state in an email and in I guess in court itself that she is a gold digger. Okay. To which the judge's uh, statement was they reached a seven million dollar settlement in the in the divorce. To which his response was, her donation of $7 million to charity is hardly the act one would expect of a gold digger. But if the judge was smart enough to realize everything, donations can be used as what? Right off. Right off. So that plays to the gold digger hand a little bit. Yeah. He also quotes an email that was sent by Deb. And I want to read this to y'all and get y'all's reaction. Okay. Back in August 2016, uh, it says the judge cited an email sent by Depp in August 2016 as indicative of the actor's true feelings towards Heard. Depp's message read, I have no mercy, no fear, and not an ounce of emotion or what I once thought was love for this gold digging, low level, dime a dozen, mushy, pointless, dangling, overused, flappy fish market. Oh, Woo. I can only hope that karma kicks in and takes the gift of breath from her. Sorry, man, Ooh. but now I will stop at nothing. Wow, that's pretty extreme. That's a lot to take in at once. <laughs> from a uh, <laughs> from a law perspective, that's so extreme. Well, let's hear that law perspective. Well, I mean, like, I'm. It's a very rough law perspective, but like, I'm currently in business law, so it's not even like fully this. It's mostly to do with contracts, but like, Mm -hmm. just coming from a from like a situation of like, if that were to be brought to a jury, it's it's a it's a rough spot to be brought to a jury with that position. There's a lot of emotion in that, but a lot of people could easily see that as um what's the word malicious malicious and like confronting almost um Mm -hmm. to amber and i don't know that that could that's one of those evidences where the the defense would definitely not want it to be spoken of fully Mm -hmm. in full capacity Mm -hmm. and another reason that all of this really came to light was Depp's lawsuit against the publisher Mm -hmm. and not I don't think this is very public or publicly known, or it might be, I could be wrong. But the original headline that was sued was, and I quote, gone potty. How can JK Rowling be genuinely happy casting wife beater Johnny Depp in the new Fantastic Beast film? Mm -hmm. And that was the article headline that started it all for Depp's liable lawsuit. Yeah, and I didn't... Didn't he go? He went against them for uh, slander, correct? Correct. Correct. That was it was uh, defamation and slander. Yeah, because it's def. I mean, that's definitely that's, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So one thing that I will say is, um, J.K. Rowling has kind of been hit and miss over the past like five years, <laughs> just because like after Harry Potter kind of ended, she kind of just does what she wants because she has so much money. Oh yeah. Um. She's untouchable. <laughs> 
Yeah. So I, when everything first started coming out um, early, early on, she was very on the defense for Johnny Depp, which a lot of people had a lot of respect for her for that. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. she understood like the fact that his career is what she was looking at. She wasn't looking at his personal life. And sometimes that gets construed. That's, oh. I mean, that's the whole thing with like people who nowadays when they find out like, how someone sits politically they won't listen to music or something it's just it's this whole idea of you have to support someone fully to be part of part like part of their entertainment it's so Mm -hmm. it's a very odd situation that society has gotten into but as of even recently she's been very quiet so what i think is i think a lot of it start because we were talking about how at the very beginning like we talked about the idea of like they shouldn't have even put him in Fantastic Beasts 1. They shouldn't have made a whole movie about him. Right. I think JK has a lot of pull at Warner Brothers. And I think she defended him and kept him Go moving on. through the movies. And I think everything just got so far into the media's perspective that she almost had to back up and do damage control. She dealt with a lot of backlash from Twitter mm-hmm. for a couple of statements that she had made. And I think that hurt her. And I think she had to look at it in the sense of, do I want to get canceled or do I want to just back up and let everything else unfold and let Warner Brothers be their own entity and me not take so much role? Now, some people may have a little bit less respect for her for that from a perspective of business. A business perspective and also her career. Her career has been built. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't want to have the same problem that Johnny's dealing with where it's pretty much that everyone turns on them because of, um, because of things that they're going through in their personal life. So she, I will admit I lost a little bit of respect, but it was, I think that might've been the reason why he was such a big role even during the controversy. See, and I, I'm, I'm with you on most, on, on almost all those points there. Like, I'm. I don't. I can't atone to if she really had much pull there. Um, it, it would seem to reason that it was probably because of her that he got the role, though, because mm-hmm. she. Th- this is her series. Like this yeah. isn't based off any books. She's straight up like, this is what I want, and they're like, we're gonna listen because you have eight movies and like seven books to prove that you know what you're talking about and a whole lot of money <laughs> and a whole lot of money. <laughs> Um, uh, some people were saying it had to do with the whole AT&T buying Warner Bros deal that could move politically in one way or another and the recent management for their media side that would determine that he got terminated at this point. Can't say for sure or not. I mean, it, it's it's a plausible theory due to AT&T's specific standpoints on certain political points of view. Um, it's it's a shame to see him go for sure. I wish, it, like I said earlier, if they didn't want him there, they shouldn't have casted. I think JK in this situation should have probably put, if she had the pull that we're you know, assuming she did, should have put her foot down and say, no, we're going to keep it like this. Because now, like Panda was saying earlier, the third one is at risk of being one of the biggest flops, I'm not going to say cinematically, but at least in the Wizarding World history. Because yeah. Because... That's a huge loss. Not only is that a lot of Johnny Depp fans that are gone, but that's also a lot of people who who would have been watching since Fantastic Beasts don't watch the drama. And they're like, where's Johnny Depp? He made this role. Why is he not here? And I'm sure they'll probably, you know, they heard of it. Um, mm-hmm. it, uh, it, also, <laughs> it also comes to the point where you were one. saying earlier, Wage, or Waji, is uh, that no matter what happens behind the scenes at home, that should not impact you getting a certain role or position. Now, obviously that goes to a certain extent. Like if you're doing some illegal stuff, like some of the nasties, yeah, we are going to get them out for our image, but situations like this, where it's just allegations and it's just Mm -hmm. a nasty divorce, that kind of Mm -hmm. stuff. Like you, if, if, that that's where you're just like we're gonna we're gonna stay out of this we're not gonna touch this you either terminate both or you leave them both in and you don't touch yeah them. that like, is exactly yeah. and what was happening and i'm not gonna go into this and further 
but with the whole part where every the me too movement where people were getting accused for a lot of things that they were said to do a lot of people only got accused nothing else happened for it there was a good amount of people that you know got tried and were convicted there was proof but there was a lot of others that were mm -hmm. shown to have no proof or basis in their allegations yeah. and mm -hmm. actors lost mm -hmm. roles and positions because of that i'm not yeah, saying that exactly. this is necessarily that scenario but yeah. it's stuff like that where it's like you gotta you gotta back up studios mm -hmm. I mean, looking at it, though, and looking at everything that's come out, and even seeing a video that's been surfacing recently of Amber Heard listening to a audio recording of a phone call that Depp had made where he is genuinely saying, well, you just hit me. She's like, oh, you got to suck it up. So what? Yeah. I'll do it again, kind of, kind of thing. Yeah. And even at that, for her being... There's another video of her in court. I think it's the same video of her in court eating cookies while listening to everything, which I mean, yeah, cool. Like if, if you're, you're hungry, hungry, you're hungry. Yeah, If you're hungry, you're hungry. I get that. If you're hungry, you're hungry. But at the same yeah. time, there was somebody who made the point. If you are this distraught by something and you're pushing this narrative so hard, how can you sit there and stomach food listening to everything going on? Which is a, a very valid point in certain aspects, but again, if you're hungry, you're hungry. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like that too. If I'm hungry and it's a bad situation, I don't care. I'm gonna eat. I'm so my face some turkey. <laughs> I tell you, y'all gonna listen to me eat. Y'all gonna see me eat, or y'all are gonna hear my stomach yeah. going off every like two minutes for the. I'm next either gonna time. cry and jumble my <laughs> stomach, or cry and eat. You're gonna be watching. Yeah. Like you're gonna see something, right? Yeah. But what else strikes me very, very weird about this is there was. A two-year gap where we didn't hear anything from anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In regards to this, the mm -hmm. last that we see anything is in August 16th of 2016, where they reached their settlement. Mm -hmm. And within the settlement, they stated that neither party has made false accusations for financial gain. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. Then we jump. There you go, baby. It's quiet. Quiet. All of a sudden, in December of 2018. That's when uh, Amber Heard's op-ed was released, stating that uh, she was an actress and an ambassador on women's rights at the ACLU, which I mean is great, good for her. Good you for know, her. they needed they needed women yeah. in that role. They needed strong women in that role. Yeah, uh, it is. but for her to then state that she was uh, that she came forward with allegations of abuse by taking them uh, seriously. Uh, she said, two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse, and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. She then stated, friends and advisors told me I would never again work as an actress, that I would be blacklisted, a movie I was attached to recast my role, which we already touched on. I had just shot a two-year campaign as the face of a global fashion brand, and the company dropped me. I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect a man accused of abuse. There ain't no protection for this man. Now, so, okay. Go ahead, Wage. I'll get into. Well, it. just okay. like just as an example to kind of like um, hop against this is the type of situation like um, the. It's a very similar situation with like Brennan Fraser. Brennan Fraser had something that happened to him on set with one of the directors, and mm -hmm. he had brought it forward, and then got blacklisted pretty mm -hmm. much for mm -hmm. the entire thing. <laughs> And then, um, who was the other actor? It was an African. I actually think was it was the Terry Crews. Terry Crews did come out saying uh, he had a, a similar itch, uh, situation yeah. to him. And I mean, he didn't get fully canceled because obviously, like, he's still a he's big still figure. Around. But like, right. he, mm -hmm. there was a lot of people just kind of like brush it off. There is definitely like a different society that responds to a male claiming more so than a female claiming. Mm -hmm. And I mean. Mm -hmm. No matter what, it boils down to if there's evidence to it, I will believe it. Right. The exactly. accusation part is where it gets so difficult because there needs to be evidence. I mean, that's how mm -hmm. that's how our judicial system works. There has to be evidence to prove. Mm -hmm. Like you're 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 um, innocent until proven guilty. It doesn't exactly. go the opposite way. Exactly. And so that's that's kind of the problem that's occurring sometimes. Is, I mean, that was the situation with Brennan Fraser. Brennan Fraser was 
in nothing for so long. And so then, long. And then, actually, mm-hmm. Warner Brothers snagged him. Do Patrol. But, yeah, yeah. And so that's the type of situation where, like, you like to hear stories about, like, that kind of thing. And, I mean, that dude was such a great guy. Like, he, he bought, like, a house and built a house for, like, his son that had um, – that had some type of mental deficiency. He rescued a horse from one of his sets that was being abused. And it's just He's like, a great guy. Great. Yeah. Actor. So yep. it's just, I haven't looked into all the evidence. That's why I'm not going to make a full statement on it from the evidence that you've um, set forward. Panda, there is definitely a lot of evidence that has been portrayed that isn't talked about mm-hmm. very publicly. Um, and it, it boils down to like, if you, you have to look at the evidence for yourself, you have to come to your own conclusion and right. you have to trust judicial systems. Sometimes it gets a little finicky. Um, Sometimes mm-hmm. it's an understatement. But, uh. So that's why like <laughs> yeah. we, that's why you have to make your own decisions, unfortunately. And that's about it. So to, to your point though, Wage, with the evidence factor of everything in judicial system, mm-hmm. it's very broken when it comes to domestic violence and domestic abuse Mm -hmm. because of the simple fact, and I've witnessed this firsthand, um, not saying that I am a victim of anything because you know what I mean? That would be way too far for me to say. Um, A neighbor of mine Mm -hmm. was um, kind of in the same boat, I guess you can say. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, false claims were made and police showed up and they instantly the minute they stepped out put him in handcuffs Mm -hmm. where he was the one being chased out of his own house with the broom and it took people neighbors going and saying something to be like wait a minute let's actually look further into this okay yeah so yeah evidence can always be manipulated Mm -hmm. mm-hmm But again, it's going to fall on the judicial system and how they witness everything and how they want to make the final call. Yeah, I agree. So. Yeah, and I mean, there's a lot of speculations and controversies going around. This is a lot of evidence <laughs> pointing one way or another, whether it's factual evidence or fabricated is something that we will have to, everyone has to you know, kind of look at and judge for themselves. Exactly. But due to this... Um, change in events how do we think the third fantastic beast movie is is going to do not only box office wise but story wise how do you think they're going to be able to to pull this off um i'll start with uh, you panda one thing that would be very interesting to see box office wise it's going to depend mm-hmm. it's going to depend based on the actor's name that comes out and as the replacement because that could very well spark genuine curiosity in people um and that might draw more people into it i know there's a lot of people saying that they'll boycott it but if the right name comes around i think people will change their opinion on that that's true it would be very interesting to see credence aka ezra miller aka dumbledore aka dumbledore (laughs) coming out and being the true grindelwald the entire time it would be very interesting to see that. That could be a way that they could go with it. Um, again, they have very, very big resources that they can really pull from. Um, I think they might have shot themselves in the foot as far as releasing him as a Dumbledore. But uh, yeah, uh, Colin Farrell, if if it were a possibility, if they could somehow work around the already booked schedule that he has they could honestly make that work too agreed um it'll be very interesting to see though it could also be where credence becomes the main villain in the series and they kind of do a opening scene with credence kind of taking over grindelwald and getting rid of grindelwald kind of situation if they wanted to go that route if they can't find anybody in time um other than that that's how i see that going also before anybody comes at me in the comments for false information uh the articles that i pulled from were from the guardian and the washington post i just want to credit those sources uh so yeah i'm just reading off of that don't come at me in the comments (laughs) to your uh to your thoughts on how the movie will go i will rebuttal to those in a little bit but uh, we're going to go to the yg over here and his uh thoughts and opinions 
So um, one thing which I already brought up is possibly being able to do like the whole like maybe like an age spell or even just a manipulation of his character so that he could be like the younger one. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I thought about is um, we have seen that uh, people have been able to do the correct animation to where like they could have a character be there and not actually be there. Um, so in that sense, something that I kind of thought of, um, they have portrayed a little bit of a love interest between um, Dumbledore and uh, Grindelwald. So something that would be interesting is having Clarence, AKA Dumbledore uh, have some type of situation. It is kind of seen that his he has a little bit of instability with some of his powers. He doesn't know his full effect of how powerful he is. So I think he has a little bit more to him. Um, it could be a situation where he were to like, something happens to him, fight or flight type of thing. He accidentally kills Grindelwald and Albus then turns. And then you have like the Dumbledores against each other having like type of thing like that. That could be a possibility. I mean, there, Correct me if I'm wrong. There's no books to go off with this, correct? Well, correct. So, but I'm just going to rebuttal into what you were saying earlier about it. that. Grindelwald is alive when Harry Potter happens. Because okay. when oh. Voldemort goes to find out where the Master Wand is, he goes to ask Grindelwald, who is in prison? So okay. killing That's Grindelwald right. wouldn't work unless it was a fake That's death. Right. And they gotcha. do it like in the fourth movie or whatever, bring him back. But killing him won't work because he's technically already alive throughout the series. You know what I mean? That is true. I, I overlooked That's that. true. I wasn't thinking about that. Uh, Just popped a balloon there. <laughs> well, there was all this stuff that was really pushed with the Dumble with um, Clarence. Clarence, I'm gonna call him Credence. Clarence Dumbledore. It's Credence Dumbledore. That's what he is. Uh, with Credence Dumbledore and like the Phoenix. So there could be something there. Like a dumb like the final battle is Dumbledore v Dumbledore kind of thing. Possibly. That and then I don't know, maybe he rises from the ashes as like Grindelwald. I don't know. Like really I don't know. With this type of thing, it's like it's very difficult or it's like something along so those hard lines. to speculate. I know. Because yeah. we're I mean, it's almost the same type of situation with the Black Panther. Like it's so hard to speculate because you're mm -hmm. dealing with a character not in the movie at all. And a big yeah. character, not in the movie at all. So yeah. it's just, you're having to figure out like the dynamics of like with the Spider-Man thing, we were able to have characters and like say what we could do with them. There, there was a path with this, to connect it. With this, we're talking about removing something and building a bridge. And <laughs> you got to know how to build the bridge to get the bridge built. So it's just, it, it's a very difficult but thing. But we're also in the middle of the ocean. So it's kind of hard to build. <laughs> exactly. It's like, we're out, we're out on the raft. Like yeah. it sucks. <laughs> now, Zeus, before you get into yours real uh -huh. quick, how do you think this would play out if they wanted to go this route? And this is kind of a, a question for you to piggyback off of. Okay. In the second movie, we saw Abernathy as Grindelwald at the beginning, getting his tongue serpent off however that played out to mm -hmm. actually let Grindelwald make the final escape. Mm -hmm. Now we also see Credence, AKA Dumbledore in this sense, has there been confirmation that there is actually three Dumbledore brothers? No, from my knowledge, there's only the two because yeah. there was the so, two brothers and the sister who the sister at this time is already dead. Yes. So, what if, so, to Wage's point, there is a final battle, Dumbledore v. Dumbledore. We see the Phoenix, whatnot. The battle ends with Dumbledore telling Credence the actual truth of who he really is as his brother by the same name that we see him in the Harry Potter series. I don't remember the name off the top of my head. I think he, I think he calls it, I think Dumbledore, or not Dumbledore, if I'm not mistaken, Grindelwald actually called him in the end of Crimes of Grindelwald. He called him no. Alurius. Oh, he uh, did? Yeah, he, he did. No, he didn't, he didn't confirm the name. The name was completely different. That's why I'm stating this. At the end of Where the... Where did the Alurius Dumbledore come from then? That's what... Um, let me see. Oh, that was when they were talking about the switch that um, happened on the train or the the boat. No, that's the name that they give that he states to 
Credence as his real name, but the brother's name in the Harry Potter is world Aberforth. or series is Aberforth. Yeah, so, so it's a completely different name. So yeah, he's he's correct on this one. I just Googled this right now. Okay. When Grindelwald <laughs> told Credence, he told himself he was Aurelius Dumbledore. Okay. Yes. Whereas Aurelius. what he is in the Harry Potter timeline is Aberforth. So What's up with these moms, dude? Like, <laughs> come on. Yeah, Albus, Aurelius, Alarius, like, Aberius. chill out. These come British on. mothers. Are you What's serious? up with Alan? Like, where did Alan go? <laughs> or like Alex? Like, come on. Where's man. our John Dumbledore at? <laughs> Can I get a David Dumbledore, please? <laughs> Johnny D. Instead of, instead of a John Doe, it's a John Dumbledore. <laughs> nah, I think a, a Carol Dumbledore would be better. <laughs> It made an appearance. It did. <laughs> He's all fat and short. <laughs> Eradicadabra. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. my bad. So that's that's kind of Mary, looking yeah. at everything. Um, we could also see Abernathy come back as um, the true Grindelwald. I don't know. That, that, there's a lot that they can do, in, in my opinion. Again, it is a wizarding world. Magic is a thing. Um, face so, cover-ups are a thing. So, go 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 ahead, Wudgie. I know you got something to say. I right just there. well, I just have a question, and like I like I said, I am not super well versed with the Harry Potter world. I so, you're gonna ask the three right. brothers? <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Okay, <laughs> the three brothers are also like the. Isn't that the three brothers? The little insignia, which is like the. There's wand, the Deathly the Hollows. Sh- the, the okay, Deathly Hallows. so <laughs> are those three brothers mentioned by name? Yes. No. Nick, okay. Whoa. Yeah. No. But I, I thought you were going to go somewhere else. Sorry, I, I jumped the gun. No, the brothers are not named by name. They're just known as the brothers. However, okay. the Deathly Hollows, from what we know, is Nicholas Flamel, Dumbledore, if not Dumbledore, I think it was, I want to say it was Grindelwald. It was, it was either Grindelwald or someone before him. Um, no, and it was someone else, and I think Dumbledore was actually the other one, but he had the cloak. Um, I'll look it up. Flamel dude. had the stone, because Dumbledore eventually gets both, uh, or gets all of them eventually. But I mean, there's also the speculation that he is death. Um, to it's... my knowledge, to kind of pick it back up, that to my knowledge, watching the Harry Potter series, it was Nicholas Flamel, mm-hmm. um, Albus Dumbledore. Mm-hmm. And then um, somebody in the Potter family. I don't know because we see the cloak of invisibility be given to Harry as a gift from his father. Uh, that Dumbledore, Dumbledore has the, had. Dumbledore did have it. Okay, so that was confirmed, confirmed on that one. I didn't. Yeah, because he's like he gives it to him. He's like, "This is from your dad here," but which is also yeah. goes to the the theory of that Dumbledore's death. Because he does eventually, in the Harry Potter movies, get all of the Deathly Hollows, And or is the one giving it to... I mean, I don't think he's the one that gave it to him. Because Nicholas Flamel is old as frick. Yet he has the mm-hmm. Sorcerer's Stone. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. He oh, kn- I found the family tree. Holy crap. For who? Also, fun For fact. The, the, okay, so they were called the Peveril family. That was like the three brothers. And then... The rest mm. of them all stemmed from them. And oh my gosh. <laughs> like lot, the House of Black, the Potter family, the Slytherin family, the Morgan family, the Linfred of Stithcomb family. Oh, he's, there's so much going on. Oh my gosh. You're not kidding. That's a lot of. Dude, also, a lot of people. this is on the fandom wiki. So, I mean, take it as you go. Yeah, but take like, that holy how you go. crap. Most of these guys are like big time nerds. Um, <laughs> they they did the research, that's for sure. But you were saying, Panda. You've seen both movies, correct? Oh, yeah, I've seen all of the movies. Did you catch in the first one where Graves give, gives Credence that necklace? Yes, I knew he gave him a necklace. What it and was... Well, the insignia on it was the Deathly Hollows. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. It was the Deathly Hollows, and he said, "You touch this, and I'll know where they are." Where's so the point? I just on think that? that's weird. I just think it's weird that the Deathly Hollows was stemmed right there, because so, um, it, it kind of delves into that that fandom 
theory even more, essentially. Mm -hmm. But go ahead. So it looks like Cadmus and Salazar, Slytherin, and Cadmus, Peverall came together. They somehow had the generations that led to the House of Gaunt, which led into the Riddle family. And then you have Ignotus Peverall, who led into the Potter family. Um, and then Antioch just disappeared. I think uh, he was the one with the cloak, and he just left with death. If, if we're going Jesus. off of the... Uh, that's probably it. That's probably what's it. it called? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's something that it looks like. And that's what kind of leads to the whole thing. So, like, Tom Riddle is... And Harry are technically like long lost cousins, and yeah, they're technically fans. Dude, this holy smokes. which we I, I so felt like there was Harry Potter. I felt like there was <laughs> that was kind of like a little underline when we watched the Harry Potter movies because they not only were they connected because he tried to kill him and he yeah. left you know a uh, no what's it called um, I'm drawing a blank uh, here. It's not a not a Hollows. It's a Oh, it actually explains like Hort- the lineage Hort- of these. There we go. Thank you. Okay. It explains the lineage of each one, like the Elder One, the Resurrection Stone, the Cloak of Invisibility, and like where they went from. Huh. It's kind of interesting. Oh yeah, Harry Potter nerds—they go in depth. I'm just like I'm a semi-moderate nerd. How? How did they? Do yeah. Because you the, know what? Weird, bro. I'm not books, even going to question this because this is how I get with DC and Marvel. So I can't, in the I books, can't. JK does <laughs> put Star more Wars detail. Too. In the books, JK gives more detail on the backstory of characters, but a lot of it is also kind of speculation too, and some outside mm-hmm. sourcing. Hey, asking JK that kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. We're going to loop back over to how I think the movie's going to go. I will agree that it does determine on one their plan on the story. Because yeah. as we saw, they built it up to not necessarily this movie is going to be a big fight. It's going to be another anticipation movie. And the it's going to be a war. Yeah, the next two will be the mm-hmm. war. The third one's just it's like cool. right there. The war's going to start. Um, Building up for it. Exactly. These, these, the first movie was introduction to the characters. Number two and three is basically the build up to the war. And then four and five is basically going to be the war. Just from what I'm guessing. Yeah. Something I will say is the... Like I always bring this up because like it's something that's very fascinating to me with movies. The tone difference just between one and two is insane. Like watching the clips from one, I remembered it, and like it literally felt like it. It kind of felt like you were at the Wizarding World Mm -hmm. at Disneyland or wherever it is in Universal Mm -hmm. Studios. But like that feel of like you're in it, like it's it's all wonderful. Where it's like. (laughs) <laughs> then you go to the situation of the second one where like murdering children yeah like three-year-old <laughs> kids i was like Anakin oh <laughs> what <laughs> like, I, mean, Master Skywalker. <laughs> I was like yeah That's like it was almost like on. that but it was like just the the amount of tone difference that they were able to do with it and i mean two was definitely written very well oh, yeah. i was not a big fan definitely. of one like, one like was an going through the synapses and then also I, I only watched about like maybe three quarters of it on a plane ride. That's the extent that I got from the first one. <laughs> and I got the gist. And yeah. then I just watched like explain the ending and I was like, ah, but um, <laughs> yeah, I, <know. laughs> I, I Frankensteined my information <laughs> together today. So just it, it's pretty great. rough. You're doing great. Yeah. But You're doing great. Buddy. The, the amount of tone difference just with that like it what happened is i feel like from a from a producer and the director perspective what happened was they came out with fantastic beasts they saw the response to it but they started to realize hey we had this more geared towards younger kids getting into harry potter it's very evident that harry potter fans are getting into this more so than the younger fans we're not getting a lot of new fans we're Mm -hmm. getting the old diehard fans so Let's bring back the tones of the Deathly Hollows of the um Half of like Prince. six, seven, and eight, and eight part two, and we'll bring that in and express that. And I think that's I think that might have been a reason why some people did get deterred and why it did do a little bit worse in box office is because it's almost like if you were to make a PG version of Deadpool, okay, you would get the families to go to do it. 
then you were to bring in an R-rated version and people would be like, we're not going to do that. So it's it's mm-hmm. that same type of idea of you did alienate some some groups, but there are a lot of diehard fans who love um, who love the crimes of Grindelwald. Right. And those people will be the same ones that go to see the next one. Mm-hmm. The the problem is just losing depth is the yeah. problem. And yeah, yeah, it's as long as they keep this tone, they're gonna be fine because it's just gonna feel like the last couple of movies of Harry Potter films. And all honestly, like exactly. one thing you notice in the intros to each of the eight Harry Potter movies is the Warner Brothers intro gets darker as the movie progresses, yeah. as it the is, series yeah. progresses, it and it gets really to the cool. point where it's I literally almost that. blacked out. And I love it. It shows like I gotta go through those again. Like I'm <laughs> yes, getting so hyped. I want to go the, through them again. The first one's orange and it's colorful. By the time you get to Deathly Hallows Part Two, Part Two is <laughs> black. It is nearly Dude, nothing. It's you're like sitting there, like, uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> what's and, gonna happen? <laughs> A lot of it too. <laughs> A lot of it too has to do with the composers, honestly. Well, I think they'd had the like, same composer throughout the whole. No, 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 no. Yes, yes, yes. They they had the same composer, but the it film falls composition, the score that they do for the film. Oh, Thank you. That's a better way of wording it. Every time. It. Yeah. Fantastic Beast is doing a really good job with that, also. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because whether people want to believe it or not, but the soundtrack of a movie that the soundtrack that plays during the movie itself makes or breaks the ambience too. It does and Warner Brothers has done such a good job with that by like you said changing the logo shade every movie in the Harry it's those Potter little things especially series. when JK's involved you know those little exactly. things exactly and even at that if you listen to the the composition that's playing in the opening of each of those Warner Brothers pictures that comes up it gets slower every time and darker and it gets eerie every mm-hmm. time and that's well, just me me being a music head and me being in band and oh, seeing beautiful. compositions and that. whatnot it is a remarkable thing to see yeah. because it that's gets you ready for there. what's about to happen well it just also reminds me of like what warner brothers did with um the christian bale batman series like when yes. you saw the warner brothers it was the yeah it's yes. the theme like you Weird. had and you felt that and that was like a part what it is is when you have a movie production company that's able to implement their own logo within the movie and allow itself to become the vibe of the movie you open up this whole new understanding for the company because warner brothers has done an amazing work with the things that they've dealt with mm-hmm. now Justice League, we're gonna not talk about, but like we'll about certain things time. like that yeah. is they they know what they can do with a franchise, um, especially when they have someone like J.K. who's right there with them constantly going over everything. Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of times where they'll take a they'll take a book and then they'll implement it. Like I know that Stephen King didn't have a lot of influence with the It movies. Correct. I know that he mm-hmm. he. Pretty much they took his ideas and then they modernized it, especially the second one. The second one was literally just they took that age and then they put it in the modern day. So that yeah. type of thing, it's when you you can respect a company so well when they start to implement their own style into it. Like Fox always did that. that. Fox has always did that with the 20th Century Fox thing. Yeah. It would change per film, but you always had the Fox theme song. You always knew it was Fox when you heard the, the trumpets. Yeah. In the, in the, you know. yeah, it was. it's that type of just like they built their own brand just from that, and everyone knows that brand. Oh, yeah, and with so. kind of to come back over to Harry Potter because this is not a Sorry. Warner Brothers I was yeah, yeah. sorry. Yes. Warner Brothers yeah. fanboying. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, the Crimes of Grindelwald is one of my favorite Harry Potter movies. Besides the Half Blood Prince, those two are Half Blood oh, Prince was good. Those Half two are my top good. Harry Potter movie. universe movies. Um, mm-hmm. It definitely gives me the same vibe as that movie as well. As it well, does as well as the last you know three Ugh. Deathly Hallows. Um, they did the director did a very good job with it. The composer always did a good job and to bounce to the Warner Brothers thing. Warner Brothers do know what they're doing with the composers. Like they always have a good yes. job. When it came to the Dark Knight, the trilogy, they had Christopher oh. Nolan, 
an amazing director, Hans Zimmer, the legendary composer. Of course, they like that. they're the dynamic yeah. duo, basically. Mm-hmm. And they I, they didn't get those names, but they did similar work with the Harry Potter series and the Fantastic mm-hmm. series, where they had an amazing composer and they knew exactly what they were doing, and the music really did make it, like. It does when they went from Fantastic Beasts, which was basically like Sorcerer's Stone, and then they went to Half Blood Prince within like two movies. Yes, it deterred some new fans and maybe some fans that were moderate because it was a complete flip of the coin. Like it was, yep. you had the light and then the dark, and within an instant, basically. Mm-hmm. And for yeah. hardcore fans, it was fine because they kind of expected it. They knew what was going to mm-hmm. happen, and they've seen yeah. it was progressively getting to that stage. Whereas this one's just like right into it. There's no filler episodes. We're going balls deep, and that did exactly. Break, you know, yeah. very hardcore fans like me. I I love that movie. And I was surprised that it didn't do good in the box office, and that's that's one of my fears for the third one. Is I think they're going to do the same tone where they're going to keep it dark, maybe semi dark. Um, because it is a build up to a war. And if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be World War II era. So it's yeah. going to be the escalations of mm-hmm. Nazi Germany and all that kind of stuff, which I don't know if they will implement that stuff, if Grindelwald will have an influence on it, which that could be cool because that would show that he's trying to conquer the world, not just one side of it. But don't. <laughs> and um, it's, it's definitely something that we'll be able to speculate on because it is Wizarding World and they can go wherever because these aren't based on books so there's not much to go on exactly the possibilities are endless for it and how we thought the casting would go is one thing how we think the movie's going to go is another i'm sure the composer is going to be absolutely amazing and whoever's directing is going to do an amazing either way yeah yeah either way that's not the issue it's more of the story is what is deterring everything exactly but i don't know every one thing that i hear one thing that I will say that that Wizarding World has done very well is, and this is like a very small detail that I, I just noticed looking at this family tree, is the callback to the, the former characters mm-hmm. that they've mm-hmm. had. For they instance, keep the lineage and when, they love it. Oh, yeah. They keep the lineage and they love it. For instance, mm-hmm. I only knew the one of the Potter kids that Harry had. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that was son. Albus Severus Potter. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that there was three, yep. and in each three of them, there is a callback to another character. Mm-hmm. Well, that's because that was part of the cursed child, which was a script for a play yeah. that they're apparently trying to adapt into a movie as well. But I never realized yeah. that because the first one is James Sirius Potter. Yeah. The second one, Albus Severus Potter, and the third one, Lily Luna Potter. Yeah. Lots of I was cool. that was really interesting to I mean, see, and that's really cool to see. A lot of well, you're gone. A lot of first names with his middle name and the middle names and whatnot. Yeah, and yeah. A little less original. That's gonna but, be I mean, something. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's gonna be interesting to see where Fantastic Beasts goes. I I don't know. I fell in love with the movies only because of the cinematic style of them. Yeah, but that's just me. Yeah. Um. Oh, I was gonna say something. Oh, okay. Sort of just as like, no, <laughs> just like something that like really funny popped into my head. I was like, oh, easy way. What they can do is they can CGI Johnny Depp switching into Hitler and then watch him just like take over the world. Bam. I knew that's the route you were gonna easy go. And Done. I was like, Done. Done. That's <laughs> that's wow. terrible. That's terrible on so many <laughs> levels. Right. oh that's like the worst writing ever like that was just a that was like that was like that initial pop of my head that was like huh. jk approved <laughs> stamp it stamp it JK stamp approved. it send it <laughs> send it with a raven uh-huh. sorry now clever yeah thank you it's yeah but do. who would send it edwin <laughs> no you didn't get it i said who no, I got it. I just ignored it. <laughs> oh, thanks. No, yeah, no, that was kind of one of those where like, we're just going to throw the name out there. It's like, hey, let me throw this in front of you. Hey, let me just jump over it. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, oh. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this episode here because, mm-hmm. I mean, the Johnny Depp scenario did drag a little bit long. Um, but there is so much to speculate on this. Like, yeah, there really is. We could probably go another hour and a half just talking about 
you know, ner- nerding out about the series in general, and then uh, how we yeah. think the movie and, and mm-hmm. the series is going to go from there. Um, yeah. We will try to come out with more Harry Potter podcasts in the event future, so that way you guys can interact with our uh, nerdiness <laughs> and, and stuff. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're watching this elsewhere or listening elsewhere, don't forget to follow and share this, the, share the love. Now let us know what you think. We have an Instagram and Twitter. It's the block party fun. Suggestions are welcomed also. Suggestions yeah. are also welcome. And we do appreciate that. Um, but like I said, that's going to be it for this video here. We are Nerds and Squares. I'm Captain Zeus. These fine um, gentlemen are. I'm the Waji. Wage. I'm a relatable panda. He's a he's a panda that uh, semi relatable too, um, and we just will a just a little bit. Catch you guys in the next episode. All right, see ya. Peace. Adios.